Hello and welcome. What you're seeing now is the very first delivery of the Wheels Boy Express service. We're in business, baby. It is undeniable that over the past 10 years or so, there's been some major changes to the way that people buy things, mainly a huge shift towards online shopping. What that means is that more and more packages need to be delivered to more and more customers, but how do you do it? What vehicle do you use? The answer in many countries, including the United States where I'm from, is a big van, maybe a Ford Transit or a Mercedes Sprinter or something even larger. Here in China, the answer is often a electric scooter or even a three-wheeler. It's not uncommon to see those things loaded down with dozens of packages all headed to different customers. Well, today we are going to be reviewing a different answer to that question. One that might just provide a better solution and replace those scooters and maybe even some of those vans. That answer is the Chengshu 01, an all-electric van from Chinese manufacturer Zhujun. Zhujun started as an R&D outfit for both foreign and domestic automakers before it decided to start building cars for itself. The result is their brand new factory in China's Shandong province capable of producing 100,000 of these little vans per year. Priced around $6,000, the company sees the Chengshu 01 as a safer, cost-effective alternative to the electric scooters and three-wheelers generally used to deliver packages here in China. What's even more interesting is the possibility of this thing making its way to other markets. To find out if the 01 is really up to the task, we headed to the city of Jinan to put it through its paces. And so, Wheels Boy Express was born. But if I'm going to be a package delivery guy for a day, I need to get in character. And what better way to get in character than an outfit change? That's better. To be honest, I decided I wanted to review the Chengshu 01 the first second I saw it. I love nothing more than miniaturized vans. It's like seeing a tiny giraffe or a little baby elephant. It certainly helps that they gave it a face that is incredibly cute. It makes me want to give it a name and have it follow me around all day. This one, I'm going to call him Benjamin, and we are going to be best friends, and we're going to go on adventures together. From here, you can get an idea of just how short this thing is. I'm about 1.72, 1.73 meters taller, about 5 foot 9, 5 foot 9 and a half when I'm feeling confident, and I am taller than it. Let's talk about a couple of the interesting things here on the side. First of all, we have our 13 inch steelies, which I love, always love a good steely. Uh, even this white car comes with a nice splash of color in the form of this kind of light uh, blue or green here. Uh, all vehicles have that. The orange one that we uh, have also have footage of, that has a black accent, which goes a little bit better. Um, also this, you'll see, we have footage from before of the official Wheels Boy Express version of this van, which in my opinion is the best looking version. But this is kind of what you might call a, a blackboard of sorts. Eventually they plan to have a screen behind this in later models, but for now uh, you can use pens basically just to write your own advertisements or your own messages on it. It's actually pretty adorable. Let's have a look at the back, shall we? As you can see, plenty of space. I'm actually standing in an area right here in this model. This is the standard range version. So the battery pack is up here under the front seats. The plus or extended range models will have a set of batteries placed here as well. Since the batteries aren't here, it actually offers a nice area for if you need to get into the vehicle and grab packages or something like that. It gives you just a little bit of extra headroom to make it more comfortable. Uh, overall, the space is extensive. Now this particular version doesn't have this but you can place shelves along this area or here as well to make it easier to short packages and keep them separate. The inside of the Trunks 01 is all business and by business I do mean hard plastic and exposed metal but that also means it's practical including a ton of places to store things like a cubby here, 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 here and finally here where there is a USB port to connect your phone. In terms of buttons, we really only have the ones here. This is a standard model, which does not have air conditioning, but it does have a fan to blow some hot air at your face. Uh, other than that, the only really interesting one, well, that's the sport button. Yes, this does have a sport mode and an eco mode. I have tried them. The difference is not huge, but it is noticeable, which is appreciated. Finally, we have the uh, transmission knob here, which has reverse, neutral drive, park, 
that's your handbrake there. The instrument cluster here is the only screen inside of this car, and it does have some surprises, including Bluetooth, uh, audio, and hands-free calling. I have connected my phone, and I can tell you it does work. The Jujun Chengshir 01 is powered by a 15 kilowatt rear-mounted electric motor that can be charged using a 220 volt home outlet. The standard range version has a 10.7 kilowatt hour battery pack that provides 120 kilometers of range on the NEDC cycle, while the Plus has a 20 kilowatt hour battery pack and an advertised range of 240 kilometers. The 01 lacks much in the way of safety equipment, including airbags and electronic stability control. But considering the price and the fact that it's supposed to compete with scooters, that's understandable. I know we're making a joke, funny haha, -ha, about the fact that I'm wearing this uniform, but we really are delivering packages today. I've been driving this thing around for a while and delivered packages to multiple locations, so it is a pretty good review <laughs> of this car's intended function, which is as a delivery car. It's intended specifically for that, so that's how we should review it. The same way that you think of a passenger car, uh, you know, I drive it on the road, I use it during the week, and I try to get an idea of what it's like. That's what you should do for this car as well. As a commercial vehicle, use it the way it's intended. Now, when using it the way it is intended, it works quite well. Uh, we have delivered a lot of packages. Uh, the pluses, as mentioned before, this is small. It's only 3.7 meters long, but even more importantly than that, it is only uh, I mean, I can't even tell you, very narrow. It's very narrow, I don't have a specific number, but all I can tell you is that when we're driving in the back alleys uh, in the city delivering packages, which you often have to do, it's very, very easy to negotiate those narrow areas and to do U-turns. Now, the downside, uh, one thing, is that this thing has no power steering, and that lack of power steering is not a problem when I'm up here on this elevated road. Uh, but when you're trying to do a U-turn in a tight alley with a bunch of cars beeping at you and scooters looking to ram you to get you out of the way, uh, it does feel uh, kind of difficult to, to do. It takes a lot of effort and adds just a little bit more sweat. Speaking of sweat, this is real. This is not makeup. I'm really sweating. We are really delivering packages. Uh, the windows are shut because we want to give you the best possible sound quality. This sweat, this is for you guys. Um, other comments, in terms of acceleration, 15 kilowatts, 20 horsepower, 90 newton meters of torque, about 66 or 67 pound feet. Uh, it's slow. It's really slow. It's very slow. Uh, but it is sufficient to squirt in and out of holes in traffic, uh, aided, of course, by the tiny size. It's, it's really more than enough for urban areas. This is not a vehicle that's intended to be used. Uh, in the suburb, suburb, excuse me, let alone out in the countryside. This is not something you're going to use to deliver packages in, in Wyoming in the U.S. or something where there's miles between the houses. It's, it's very good and certainly sufficient for use in urban areas like this. The suspension is McPherson struts up front and leaf springs, oh, leaf springs in the rear in the tradition of cheap commercial vehicles for so many years. As a result, well, I'm I'm having flashbacks to the Wuling Fighting pickup truck that we drove recently. Unloaded, especially this thing, just like the pickup truck, likes to bounce the rear when it goes over, uh, goes over large bumps or, frankly, even small bumps. Uh, other than that, the ride is perfectly sufficient. Uh, you're not going to probably have a, a lot of broken packages in the back, which, hey, that's the most important thing. Driving the Chengshu 01 around the city of Chinon for a day was an enlightening experience. It gave us the tiniest glimpse into the life of a delivery person here in China, and it's clearly an incredibly tough job. On top of dealing with the weather and the breakneck pace that you have to maintain, there is also the issue of safety. Electric scooters and three-wheelers might be fast and convenient, but they're nowhere near as safe as driving around in an enclosed vehicle, even one as simple as the 01. The O1 also offers the possibility of increased efficiency. Its much larger cargo area means fewer trips back to the depot to pick up more packages. And the logistics management software developed by Zhu Jun means delivery drivers can take better advantage of all that space.
Of course, Jujun, like so many other manufacturers, sees autonomous systems as the true future of this industry and is working on their own autonomous version of the Changshu Zero One. Ultimately, I think that the Changshu Zero One does a fine job of accomplishing its goal of providing a safer but still effective uh, replacement for the traditional electric scooters and three-wheelers here in China. However, I also believe it has wider applications. Can you imagine seeing a city, maybe one in the West, for example, just chock full of these adorable things driving around instead of seeing a bunch of Ford Transits or Ram Promasters or Mercedes vans or something? I don't know about you, but that's the world I'd like to live in. That's gonna have to do it for today. Benjamin and I have some deliveries to make.